OK. So why does the discriminant work, and why does it tell us what it tells us? So let's go back through the examples again, just so you guys can remember. So once you plug in, find your values for a, b, and c, you plug them in, we found out that if we have a positive number that is a square number, we have two real rational roots. If this is a number is a positive number, but it's not a square number, we can't take the square root of it, so we're going to have two real irrational roots. If our discriminant equals 0, we only have one real solution. And if our discriminant is equal to a negative number, we end up having two complex solutions. Now, why do we know that, or how do we know that? And how are we going to be able to kind of ensure that that works that way? Well, here's the way you guys can always understand this. Remember, we call this a discriminant. If you guys remember, discriminant is what you take the square root of. So that's why we call this a discriminant, because in a formula that we're going to learn, this value we're taking the square root of. So it doesn't make sense then when you have a square number why you're going to have two integers, right? Because you have to take the square root of this number in the formula, all right? That's why you have to have positive numbers. And that's why, remember, if you had negative numbers, we can't take the square root of negative number, right? But we did learn how to take the square root of negative numbers using the complex number system, correct? By making i with negative 1, right? Square root of negative 1, make it to i. So that's where this comes from. Now, how do we know then? Why do we know if it's two or one solutions? Well, here's the rest of the formula for you. x intercepts, what are your solutions? Opposite of b, plus or minus, the square root of your discriminant, all divided by 2 times a. All right? Now, I'm sorry? That's going to be your quadratic formula. I, I'm not going to prove to you where the quadratic formula is going to come from. But what I want to tell you about is a couple things. We found out the discriminant is going to tell us a lot about our zeros, right? If you can't factor it, you can't do the, if you don't want to do the complete and the square, you can also find your solutions by using the quadratic formula. All right? So this is another way to find the values of x. OK? So one thing I wanted to look at, though, notice that we're taking the square root is always plus or minus. If you guys remember, remember when we were solving by, qua by completing the square? Right? We had to square root both sides. And what did we do when we took the square root? Plus or minus. Right? And that gave us two values. So what you're going to notice, Michaela, is we have always two values built in, except for what happened when this is equal to 0. Right? We said if your discriminant is equal to 0, how many solutions do you have? 1. Well, why is that? Well, can you have plus or minus 0? Can 0 be positive or negative? No. So therefore, that's why when you have 0 as your discriminant, you're only going to have your one real um, rational root. Okay? If your discriminant's negative, since you're taking the square root of negative number, you're going to have your imaginary numbers and your complex roots. And if it's, if it's a square number, you can take the square root, so you'll have rational roots. And if it's not a square number, you're going to have irrational roots. All right? So, yes? Yes? 